this is going to be the world record attempt for the world's fastest all-electric ice cream van. So here goes. Now over the years I have set a fair few world records, but the most recent one, my recent challenge, was actually probably the hardest, and that was to build the world's fastest ice cream van. But this time it had to be electric. Now the first stage of this quite audacious project is to actually choose the correct ice cream van. So I've actually come here to Whitby Morrison, because they are the doms of the ice cream van making world. And actually, I'm hoping I'm gonna get some direction, but also a few tips and some ideas as to where I should take this. So this is Ed Whitby, he's third generation of this amazing company. Hello, sir. Hi, Ed. Okay. I'm good, um, but I'm a little bit nervous. I've got to come up with some brilliant idea for a, an ice cream van. I'm gonna make it electric. I need I need something that's kind of fast, but retro and sort of cool and very ice cream van-y and stuff. I need to try and find a way around that. So I'm hoping you can guide me through the mad plethora that is the ice cream van world. Plenty to choose from. Yeah, yeah. So many influences, so many styles, colours. I mean, it's incredible, actually, the difference in the styles. I mean, that one, the roof on that one is quite sort of aerodynamic, but of course the front is quite slab. Well, still looking, I mean, this is a fantastic graveyard of old ice cream vans at Whitby Morrison's. And they're really wonderful because you've got all these lovely old curves. They're very, very cute to look at, very evocative. But the thing is, they're also can be very rusty, quite damaged in places, and that's a load of extra work. It's gonna be bad enough doing the conversion. So I need something as cute and lovely as this, but perhaps a bit more streamlined, perhaps in a lot better condition. It's been quite a search. <laughs> Well, this is it. I have found my project vehicle. It's a very special ice cream van as well, because this is the Whitby Morrison development prototype for their new body design, the Amalfi. And what's lovely about it being so modern is of course it's on a brand new van as well. And this is the right van for the job, the Mercedes Sprinter. Now, not only is it really well made, it's also very nice and slippery, very aerodynamic, it's lighter, and of course, perhaps the best bit is there's no rust either, which is always a good thing. Now, perhaps the most important thing about an ice cream van, of course, is that you can make ice cream. To that end, we have the Carpeggiani soft ice cream machine, a very important machine indeed, because this can pump out tons of ice cream every couple of seconds in those hot summer days. Now, it's powered by loads of belts and pulleys. You can see that ultimately you come down to a shaft that goes into the engine bay and is powered by a diesel engine. All I've got to do is work out how to power this independently of an engine that's no longer there. Now, also in the back, you've got your soft ice cream there, you've got your hard ice cream freezers here, so your lollipops, all that kind of stuff. So this definitely is an ice cream van. So let's have a look on the outside and see all its features there. It's nice and easy to walk through to the driving position, but once you're sitting here, you've got plenty of headroom, actually quite useful for a racing helmet, very good. Yeah. As the name suggests, the Sprinter is built for speed. It has a very small, very narrow frontal area. That means it'll be able to push itself through the wind much more easily, much less resistance. And the same is true for the bodywork on top as well. You can see a nice big point on there that's gonna part the air just like the bow of a ship. So that's very, very handy because of course, the less resistance, the more power I can use for going faster. Now, on the bodywork, you can actually look all these lovely lines cut into the bodywork there, they've been actually blended into the bodywork of the ice cream van. So it's gonna look fast even when it's parked up. And actually the same could be said, the little fins on the back, nice little nods to the 50s, some of those earlier designs we saw in the museum, same with the window up here as well. And of course, they also just make it look more stylish, more like an ice cream van, but also they might give a little bit of top speed stability. We'll have to wait and see. Now around the back of the vehicle, just underneath the freezers in there, we have it's really nice space. Now that could be ideal for some electronics boxes, maybe some batteries. I'll have to work that out. It's good to know it's there. And then the last thing, the windows. Now you may notice they've actually been bonded in. They're much more sleek, much more 
aerodynamic than a standard sort of aluminium lumpy, the old kind of design he would have used. And ordinarily, of course, on an ice cream van, you'd have a window probably on both sides for a nice bit of fresh air, but I wanted to make sure this to go as fast as possible. So I've asked for one single sheet of sleek glass to go down the side. And that's definitely gonna make this side go faster through the air. So it might just kind of bend a little bit like a curling stone. We'll have to see how that goes too. Now this is actually probably the hardest part of any project, actually getting down to starting. I'm gonna break a perfectly good ice cream van and hopefully make it a lot better. So let's get cracking. spending some time under our ice cream van, it's given me the opportunity to think about all the electric drive stuff I'm gonna to need to try and cram into this space to make it go. Now, obviously, we do have our little stowaway case underneath the freezers there, but there's lots of other space underneath the vehicle itself. Now, when you think about it, you've got the electric motor, got an inverter pack which actually runs the motor, the controllers that perhaps run that. We've also got all the batteries and lots of them, and then there's gonna be a battery charger as well. No doubt there's umpteen other boxes that are gonna be required. Now, all of that stuff is gonna to have to be hidden somewhere in the structure of our ice cream van, and the more hidden they are, the better it's going to look. Now, the interesting thing is, first up, the motor. Now, the electric motor could actually sit on the front of the differential there. And the idea of that would be, of course, you'd have direct drive, you've got lots of lovely long torque curves, which means you could get away without any gears whatsoever at all. Unfortunately though, this does bounce up and down for one thing. Also, it's a little bit in the element, so maybe it'd be better to stick it all the way on the end of the prop shaft where the gearbox goes. Now that could be a nice safe place to do that. And even with the prop shaft in position, then also it gives us all this space where the fuel tank and the exhaust system, all that stuff used to go. I could now actually hide my batteries here too, as well as in the back little locker. And in fact, if there's enough room in the engine bay, I could also put some batteries in there so I could spread the weight out. So I've got lots of lovely options. Well, the next thing is, I think I'm done underneath here. Take that engine out. Well, at last, the engine is out of our ice cream van, so that can now go into storage or whatever, but I've been thinking about the gearbox. I think it might be useful to hang on to this. I have no idea how long the track is while we're doing the record. If it's two miles long, then the electric motor will easily be able to get up to speed in time. But if it's much shorter, I may need to use the gears to accelerate more quickly. So therefore, I think we'll hang on to that, which means I need to separate it from the engine. Well, that's it. I've now managed to remove everything I don't need from our ice cream van, the engine, the fuel tank, and everything else. I now need to think about everything that's going to go back in, the electric drivetrain. How is it going to fit? Where am I going to store everything? And how am I going to make it go fast enough to actually set the world record? Now, a really important and very fun part of our ice cream van project is actually, what is it going to look like? What kind of design are we going to go for? I really want it to be very ice creamy. But at the same time, it's got to be kind of modern and fast. It's quite complicated. So I'm here with Ed Whitby, one of the family members of this wonderful business. And we're going to discuss, well, basically design and colour, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's an awful lot of stuff going on here. There's, I mean, what I want to try and do is capture ice cream vanness, you know, the essence of an ice cream van. But at the same time, we're going really fast. And I think the Amalfi body is fantastic. And it's very, very futuristic. So I kind of want to try and drag it back a bit. Go, go sort of go a bit more retro with it. <laughs> Very good job of this. Um, so then, it sort of, you, you see these different sort of yeah, um, yeah. sort of colours or bits coming down. So it's like, so it's like, there's, it's almost like speed. And then I guess it depends on how we're going to fight with the lines because I want to sort of use them if we can. Now, I don't know. Well, if you're saying it was something along those lines, I don't know whether we go with the darker one, perhaps. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, how many oranges do you actually need, realistically?
It's getting very exciting because obviously our van is now back at Whitby Morrison. They're now applying all of the paint. We're going to have a really lovely scheme where we have orange at the back, cream at the front with these kind of scallops, a very hot rod, salt flat racing kind of mode It's the idea. So it's going to be very retro because it's actually quite a modern shaped van. So I'm going to take it back a few years and keep it looking kind of naive and very cute like an ice cream van should. <laughs> the ice cream van is looking so good. It looks lovely and retro and it looks super fast as well. A little bit hot rod and of course it looks just like a proper ice cream van. A couple of little details to finish off. Perhaps the most significant is actually making it run under its own electric power. So I've still got a ton of work to do. Now the problem with an ice cream van is it is basically a really big brick and to push that through the air really fast you need a lot of energy and of course you have got quite a bit of room but to do it electrically is a whole other story. Having converted our Sprinter to electric drive was actually almost the easy bit because the ice cream machine is normally powered by the diesel engine. So there's a shaft, a connection on the engine. That shaft goes through the bulkhead, under the passenger seat, into this big box. And inside there, there's pulleys and belts and shafts, all these things spinning around. So the problem is, because I no longer have any of that, I had to find a way to spin the machine on its own electrically. So using an electric motor, another controller, a whole load of extra batteries, all just to make ice cream. After weeks of sleepless nights, we finally felt we'd done enough to be able to give the record attempt a proper go. So we headed up to Bruntingthorpe Airfield, ready for the big day. Unfortunately, I was in for a bit of a bumpy ride. Well, look at that, it actually goes. The question is, can it go fast enough? Now this is quite important. To qualify as an actual working ice cream van, one of the many things you have to have is a price list for your product. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun with that. So we've also got an indication of what's gonna to happen to the ice cream at speed. Now, because this is an official Guinness World Records attempt, I need an adjudicator. So here's Prav. Hello, sir. Ed, absolutely delighted to be invited here to adjudicate the fastest electric ice cream van. It's a brand new record, mm -hmm. very exciting. We can't just turn up with a van and go, can I do 10 miles an hour <laughs> to do it? We have set a minimum. Yes. Okay. The minimum is 112 kilometers per hour, right. just a shade under 70 miles per hour. That's one part. Okay. But you have to meet a set of strict guidelines, mm -hmm. absolutely essential. It's got to be commercially available, traditional ice cream van. Mm -hmm. That's paramount. So there it is. It's got to be painted in a traditional colors. It's got to have a serving hatch mm -hmm. to be able to serve ice cream to whoever wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. It's got to have a price list. It's got to have enough space in there to allow somebody to serve the ice cream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Importantly, it's an electric powered. Yes. All right. No other powers are allowed. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Uh, it's got to be able to serve a soft serve ice cream. That's essential. Well, so far I seem to be doing okay. So I yeah. think I've ticked most of the boxes. The last thing I need to do is to actually get that minimum speed. So there's the challenge. Got to make sure you're safe, just in case it all goes horribly wrong. Well, 
this is extremely pedestrian at the moment because our limp home is our limp home mode has actually got a limp home mode so it seems that we're going even slower than also I've got six gears and I'm in fifth gear and I'm doing almost 18 knots an hour which is quite exciting I have to say but I have actually walked faster so we'll see what goes on with that I'm going to pop it into sixth there goes almost exactly nothing yes we actually we are doing 19 miles an hour I think probably we may we're going to drive at a drone at 20 miles an hour and embarrass ourselves. Now for the first attempt we only had a couple of weeks to completely convert the van and the machine to electric drive. There were lots of sleepless nights, particularly the night before the run itself. I thought I checked everything. So I got to the start, we're ready, we're lined up. Here we go, I put my foot on the throttle and suddenly there's a noise. Didn't really think much of it, but when we went to go, there was nothing. We got to about 20 miles an hour, not much faster than a milk float. It was so embarrassing, I couldn't even use the chimes. Well, I may not have managed the speed record, but I did head up north for another record attempt with some friends at Whitby Morrison. They were attempting the world's largest parade of ice cream vans, a sight to behold for sure. Now, it wasn't exactly a speed attempt because they did crawl around the track. You know that feeling, you know, whatever the weather, when you just got to have an ice cream? The question is, where are you gonna find one? Everybody has an ice cream van memory. Everybody's bought an ice cream from a van at some point in their lives. We've all grown up with them, with the sound of the jingles, all about the experience of going to the van to, to, to choose what you want from the menu on there. Fond memories for everybody. It might start in childhood, but everybody carries those memories through adulthood as well. And it's that British tradition that, that all of us can relate to, that all of us enjoy. Now the part that blew up on our first attempt was actually to do with the charging circuit quite bizarrely. So I actually ripped all of that out and put in a whole new motor controller, kept it much more simple. So if you think of that as the ECU of a petrol engine. So basically when you put your foot on the throttle, that signal is converted into the amount of fuel or energy that's put into the engine. Now in the case of this, it's actually how much electricity is pushed into the motor. So it's actually quite an important part. So we've changed that, we've remapped it, we've kind of programmed it so it's exactly right for this particular application and it made a world of difference. Right, so this is Mark II or three or four or whatever I'm up to, but I still have the Mercedes Sprinter gearbox in the back there. Still also got these water jet cut slithers of aluminium, making a kind of intermediary gearbox that goes onto the electric motor underneath. And now, pride of place on the very top of that motor is the motor controller. Very expensive, but very programmable. Just as all my modifications were completed and the van was finally ready, we were hit with the coronavirus pandemic. Thankfully, there was one last timing day organised by the UK Timing Association, so we booked our slot, hooned it up to Elvington, ready to put the new and improved van through its paces. So here we go, this is going to be a world record attempt for the world's fastest all-electric ice cream van, so here goes. How 
kamu loh. a speed record you're often required to actually drive in both directions on a track to try and cancel out any influence from the wind so though we managed to get a top speed of 75 miles an hour we did actually end up getting an average top speed of 73.921 miles an hour a record but only just but it's still a record Now perhaps the most important thing that's come out of this project is I've actually developed a kit that will convert any diesel ice cream van to run with this ice cream machine working off electricity, which means no more diesel fumes ever again with your ice cream. That's got to be a winner. In this World Records book 2021, look inside leaves of the cover. Look at that. I can see the sofa car. I can see the bathroom car. That is wonderful. But let's get into the meat. Page one. Oh, look at that. Completely in the book. Very exciting. <laughs>